Hello. In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. Suppose A and B are sets. Then A times B is equal to B times A. If and only if either A is the empty set, B is the empty set, or A is equal to B. Now it turns out a useful fact in proving this theorem is the following. For any set A, A times the empty set is equal to the empty set times A. This is going to be useful in proving this theorem. So, to prove this theorem, notice that it contains an if and only if. So as you can imagine, we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. And we're going to prove if this is true, then this is true. Let's actually start out by proving if this is true, then this is true. In other words, we're going to start out by proving the converse. So, assume this is true. And our whole goal at this point is to deduce that A times B is equal to B times A. Now really, we have three cases to consider. And in all three cases, we are going to prove that A times B is equal to B times A. So let's start with case one, A is equal to the empty set. Now remember, because this statement is true for any set, that means it's true for the set B that we're working with in our proof. So we know that the empty set times B is equal to B times the empty set. And since A is equal to the empty set, we can replace the empty set with A. And so in this case, we have proven that A times B is equal to B times A. So now let's move on to our second case, which is if B is equal to the empty set. Now again, this statement is true for any set. So it must be true for the set A that we're working with in our proof. So we know that A times the empty set is equal to the empty set times A. And since B is equal to the empty set, that means we can replace the empty set with B. And again, we have proven that A times B is equal to B times A in this case. So now we have one last case to consider, and that is if A is equal to B. Now we know that the set A times A is equal to itself. And since A is equal to B, we can replace the second and third A's with B. And again, we have successfully deduced that A times B is equal to B times A. And we've gone through all three possibilities. And in all three cases, we have shown A times B is equal to B times A. And so this proves that if this is true, then this is true. So now let's prove that if this is true, then this is true. So assume that A times B is equal to B times A. Our whole goal now is to deduce that Either A is the empty set, B is the empty set, or A is equal to B. Now, if we have the case that either A is the empty set or B is the empty set, then this entire statement is true. And so there would be nothing more to prove. So the only other possibility is if instead of having either A is the empty set or B is the empty set, we have that A is not the empty set and B is not the empty set. So in the case where A is not the empty set and B is not the empty set, these two things are both false. So to prove this statement, we must prove that A is equal to B. So that is our goal at this point. So really, how do we do that? Well, really, we're trying to prove that two sets are equal. So to do that, what we can do is we can show that everything in A is also in B, and everything in B is also in A. Let's start by showing that everything in A is also in B. To do that, let's consider an arbitrary element of A. 
call it x. Now, since b is non-empty, that means b has at least one element, and I'll call that element little b. Now notice we have that x is an element of a and b is an element of b, which means that the ordered pair x comma b is an element of a times b. But since x comma b is an element of a times b, and a times b is equal to b times a, that means x comma b is an element of b times a. Okay, but what does it mean for an ordered pair to be an element of a Cartesian product? Well, if you recall, all that means is that the first coordinate is an element of the first set, and the second coordinate is an element of the second set. So really, we have that x is an element of b. So really, we started with an arbitrary element of a, and we showed that same element is also in b. Which means, we have shown that everything in a is also in b. So now, all we gotta do is show that everything in b is also in a. To do so, let's consider an arbitrary element of b. It's called x. Now since a is non-empty, we know that means a has at least one element in it. Let's call that element little a. So notice we have that x is an element of b and a is an element of a, so the ordered pair x comma a is an element of b times a. Now notice, because x comma a is an element of b times a, and b times a is equal to a times b, that means x comma a is an element of a times b. And again, all this means is that the first coordinate is an element of the first set, and the second coordinate is an element of the second set. So really, we have that x is an element of a. And so really, we started with an arbitrary element of b, and we showed that that same element is also in a. Which means, everything in the set b is also in a. And so at this point, we have proven that everything in a is also in b, and everything in b is also in a. And that amounts to proving that a is equal to b. And so this completes the proof. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.